Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome to Honest Trailer Commentaries for Hot D. That's Hot right. D. It's time. We're doing it. We done did it. Um, I'm not entirely sure why we're doing this from home today. What happened, Ryan? What's going on? Oh, boring stuff that no one needs to uh, know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I was down to drive in the office today, and I might just do it later for fun because it's a lovely place. And then also, we don't know where Lon is. We hope he's okay. <laughs> He was look he was slacking like he was on slack like five minutes ago so we don't know what happened um hopefully he's taking the dog for a walk and i do mean that as a euphemism for pooping um but he should be he should be here at some point in the hour because we we love and value his opinions yes. um danielle is here as, uh, as always um my erstwhile uh, uh my queen my queen the, <laughs> the um who will lead oh, us to victory. I should have worn a blonde You should have worn a... You could probably get a mop and, like, do a half-decent job um, <laughs> of a Valerian. Yo. The, all right. Well, <laughs> Halloween was yesterday. Uh, <laughs> but if you haven't been watching this show before, Australia Comedy Days, we're going to watch the Australia together. We'll talk about it. We'll show you some deleted scenes, of which I do believe we have a few this time. Um, long show. And uh, we'll do some Q&A, so keep your questions coming in the chat. And then we'll tease you with next week's Honest Trailer. Uh, which should be fun. So, um, the D is hot, is it not? Uh, I really enjoyed the show uh, all the way through. I wish I didn't. I wish I could just be like, I'm done with this, this with this world. I can delete every piece of proper noun that I learned from from House of uh, Fire and from Fire and Blood and all the appendices of all the Game of Thrones, the Wiki of Ice and Fire. Just done. Just to delete it from my brain. But no, I'm back. I, I, as Ryan said, uh, we've been fully Westeros pilled. We're back in there. Um, what right. is dead may never die, but rise again. And yeah, I just, I just love it. I, I slid right back in. I'm so happy that uh, that this show is up is good, and it has an ending that we know they're building towards. Um, that George R. R. Martin or well, so is- I haven't, I because you're like an avid. Now I've read all of the Game of Thrones books except for the one that will never come out. Um, but so. I know that you actually read this series. Like you are an avid, like Here's you the thing, are our yeah. Games of Thrones dude. This is a, well, and, but even still, like I have just a, you know, a Swiss cheese brain for, um, for uh, names and places. Well, so you put too I much did, content in it. I know too much content. It's leaking out of every hole. So <laughs> the, uh, the, um, the thing Gotta about take that it dog is, for a walk. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, this is based on a West, a Westerosi history book. Um, I think it's called Fire and Blood, but like the chapter is like the Dance of Dragons. It's mm-hmm. like this Targaryen Civil War. It's covered by, um, even within the, there's a book within the book because it, it, this period of history is covered by a maester and a court jester. And they're both giving like their sides of the story of what happened through this era. Wait, no. So we're like literally sitting through someone's incesty is like history class. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's that's what this show is based on. Is like a a section of a fake Westerosi textbook that a maester wrote, and then there's this. Uh, I guess I think he's a court jester. I don't know what the term is in in this world. Uh, Mushroom is talking about like, oh, but maybe she was sleeping with him. Oh, so there's like two kind of conflicting cats, and the show is sort of like, here's what really happened uh, during during this time period. So we know the broad outlines. We know like who wins. So I know, you know, which side comes out on top and how and why Um, there've been slight changes. um, And also they leave it ambiguous enough. Like they all think that they both agree that uh, Lenor, Prince Eric, as we call him in the honest trailer, like he, they say he died, but as we learn in the show, they actually like let him go be gay and happy somewhere else. Um, But that Mm -hmm. makes sense that those historians quote unquote would not know about that. So there's wiggle room to to change some things for the show. Mm I just like it, man. It's well acted. It looks good. Um, and it's uh, it's like I like the world of um, it's fantasy. It's obviously it's like high fantasy because yeah. you got dragons and stuff and magic, but they are really taking uh feudal politics, fake feudal politics very seriously. And I don't know, man. It's just a I just have a soft spot for it. I remember the slack like when the first episode came out and we were all like begrudgingly like, oh, I think yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> I think this, <laughs> I think this might be be fun. And yeah, no, it, it's um because 
you know, the dragons and everything, obviously awesome. Love all that high fantasy stuff. It's amazing. But you watch Game of Thrones because you want to watch like politicking. And this is super politicking. Although I do (laughs) wish that everyone, um, everyone wore like one of those, hi, my name is stickers. (laughs) That would be great. Uh, this is the one time I wish she had all of the, the white haired people. Like I just, yeah. I want just like a, <laughs> like I want lower thirds for everyone on the <laughs> But like, that was actually very helpful with um, Rings of Power was the yes. little Amazon Prime x-ray thing that you could kind of hover over and be yep. like, okay. Um, that all those names are gone. But yeah, I do know, uh, it, there, I was fine with the first generation, but once they couple the time jump with like six new kids, Absolutely. I don't know. My aiming for my anus, man. There's, there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> there's too, too many A's. <laughs> too many A's. And it's like, I do, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that they just like, let us get in a dark haired person every once in a while. So I can be like, you, I know you. You know, we, you know we call that diversity. <laughs> I'm glad that they brought in their token dark haired people, their token, token brunettes, brunette. yeah. their token hires. Um, so I would know who any of these people are because it's like, I was like, oh man, even the Negroes have white hair. Well, now I'm stumped. <laughs> yeah. All three of oh, these man. women look alike to me. I don't know what to do. With it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's tough, but I mean, fantasy suffers from that in general, but, um, yes. when you have such a big cast on a TV show plus time jumps, it was, uh, it was not easy, but overall we liked it a lot, but plenty of things to nitpick as mm-hmm. is our want to do. So let's watch Yana's trailer. Stop and start with more thoughts. Mm-hmm. Wonder where Lana is. The casting was really good on the time jumps, though. Man. Yeah. We are getting From the so channel, much work out of that. The prestige TV, <laughs> you stay up to watch as an adult. And the pre-internet porn, you stayed up to watch as a kid. Comes HBO's and pause. <laughs> mm. Shout out to all my real sex fans growing up. Kids don't know. You don't know. know. You don't know how good you got it, do you? Look, there was a point in which David Duchovny would come out on a show and be like, ooh, we're going to talk about this sexy thing that happened. It would be like X-Files. It's like, no, like triple X-Files. Like it was, y'all don't understand. (laughs) You could literally- We had to watch Static in the shape of a boob, hoping that it would like briefly resolve into something that vaguely resembled a woman. You would like close one eye and try to like squint with the other to like see if you could see what was happening. And now it's like, I won't even, I can't even imagine the idea of having an actual boob on my full TV. Like that's for (laughs) phones and phones only. (laughs) Everything was like, yeah, it was like a magic eye for porn. You had to like unfocus. Oh, it's a schooner. Yeah, Yeah, it's a schooner. (laughs) Kids these days are like, oh yeah, I schooned her. That was, that's first base. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? hey but, um, but yeah, re- re- Real Sex was like, it was, a, a, for those who don't know, and Tax Cab Confessions, after midnight on HBO, there were these programs, like in Cinemax, you know, Skinemax, they would have your, your soft cores and stuff. And there was just Reggie these Diaries, horrifying the mini, one. yeah, these just repulsive mini documentaries about like 80 year olds who like stretch their balls in the sauna and then like th- and then but like you'll see a stray boob somewhere it was great and we're not look we're not kink shaming i'm just saying that when i was like 11 i didn't need to know about clown sex and people nope. who like to like rub against balloons like i'm just that was all all we had um so there you go a uh, little history lesson <laughs> ryan says it's not tv it's porn in the chat ain't that uh, the truth uh it was and you had to yet it work for it is my point um now it's too easy yeah, uh, anyways, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> well, Esteros, in search of an heir to Game of Thrones, because every other trueborn son of their parent company is dead. House of the Dragon. Remember Daenerys? Girls named Khaleesi sure do. Turns out Ooh. she and her brother weren't the only nuts in the Targaryen family tree. Yeah, pause. As- there are, um, I know it said 755, but I think I looked it up and there's like, 700 girls named Khaleesi and like a hundred something named Daenerys. So that's a, I'd love a documentary following them throughout their lives to see what becomes. Look, I just, as a Danielle, uh, who almost, but never quite became a Danny. Cause I didn't do sports. I did theater. Um, 
because when I tried to cheerlead, they immediately were like, oh, your name's Danny now. And I was like, I think I want to do theater. Um, <laughs> it, it's, they're all going to be Danny's is what's going to happen. They're all going to be Yeah, Danny's. that's a good yeah. point. And the, but the Khaleesi's though. I don't know what to do. Callie? Callie, yeah, you just probably Callie. 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 They're going to be yeah. Callie. Yeah. Oh, Khaleesi, that's Khaleesi. it. <laughs> neither, neither option's great. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I mean, look, an influencer named their child Malibu Barbie. So like anything can happen. Oh, my God. Incredible. Well, the, yeah, you just got to not name your kid after uh, pop culture. Pop culture until be, just it ends. Because we, well, no, but that's the thing. It's, it never ends. So you're always, you know, one bad reboot away from making them into a joke again. So yeah. uh, sorry, Megatron Wolverine, my unborn son. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll have to think of a new name. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to name my first kid after like the noise that Transformers make. Like the <laughs> That's an Elon Musk kid, right? <laughs> That's an Elon Musk kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, keep going. You revisit a civil war between rival factions of goth albino sociopaths that only goes down because so many togs are named Aegon. Aegon, the prince that was promised. You are the one. Pause. Then... Don't like that. Nope. Not not a fan. Um, that was a that was one thing that was an invention of the show completely is like the importance of the prophecy that ties into Game of Thrones, the original. Yeah, which is like, like two hundred years. Don't later. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. Yeah. And also, there was plenty of it. Just also seemed like doubly like overdetermined because there was plenty of reasons without that for them to go to war against each other. Like her yes. whole council had been like, yeah, we've been playing this. Like we were just waiting to tell you, like we're going to war. We're putting a, a, putting a man on the throne. Yeah. Hey, we're putting a man on there. Problems <laughs> ain't for girls. Problems ain't for sitting on girls. Yeah, too hard. Um, <laughs> so they didn't need that, uh, especially when it just reminds you of how Game of Thrones ended. In my opinion, maybe they'll do another twist with the prophecy, like a Hodor thing. We'll be like, oh, it actually does make sense. But for now, no, not like No, it. Uh, yeah, I think it was like just a cutesy thing to be like, hey, remember that thing you liked? It's like, no, you guys don't remember. No, 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 no not, that, it ended. not that part, not that part. <laughs> uh, oh, well, uh, yeah, all right, keep going. Choose a side to root for, even though the only thing these extremely out of touch rich people have in common with their extremely poor subjects is inbreeding. Hey, Raymond, come out and look. This one's got a funny eye like you. Meet a whole new tone's worth Habsburg of characters does. trying to satisfy their raging throners, like Prince Damon, a fully armed and operational Joffrey. If you're accusing me of some depravity, you'll need to be more specific. Watch Matt Smith continue the hot streak he's been on since Mormon time, as this homicidal <laughs> narcissist with a limp noodle. We can only get it up for his family. It's just kids. <laughs> anyway. Get all Are you okay, Internet? Viserys, a stellar performance by Patty Constantine yes. as a king succumbing so, to yeah. parts falling off disease. My own face. Uh, uh, bravo. I, I, I love this character. I think he was, I think I said this on, a, on another video, but I think he's a new, he does break with the tropes of fantasy in the sense yes. that I feel like kings are either uh, good or bad. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they kind of fall into, oh, the wicked, the wicked ruler or the saintly ruler yes, who was promised. Yes. And he's just like, Oh, God, I don't want to deal with this. Like, yeah. fine, fine, he, I'll do it. He's mostly like, <laughs> and I relate I just, to that. <laughs> everybody like me? He yeah. is an influencer. He's just like, just, just like me. Just everyone he, like me, please. Can, like each other. Yeah, can you just like, I just want to go play with my toys. Um, yeah, can, can we I, just go, can we just go freaking hunt? Can I'm in so much pain. Hunt? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, everything hurts all of the time. My daughter's a brat. My brother wants to bunk, like wants to like bed yeah. my daughter. My um, face is falling off. My face is falling off. My daughter's best friend is trying to bang me and I'm probably going to let her. So can yeah. I just like have <laughs> one day where none of you bother me? He's like Tim the Tool Man Taylor. He just wants yeah. like one day where no one bugs him. Yeah, it was great. So uh, bravo to, uh, and Patty, like the, the role of a lifetime there. Yes. Um, he really, I've he really always thought it. that he should like have more, meaty stuff uh so i'm really glad that he got this and i'm hoping that more people will cast him in things where he gets to do this and not just be silly funny man there you go um so yeah really good casting all around as you said uh mm. okay keep going 
He's no longer a handsome one. Who just wants to hang out in his room and play with his artisanal minifigs all day. He'll declare his daughter Rhaenyra as heir. A girl who looks like she just found out she isn't getting a pony. Who gets hardened, sharpened, and aged about 20 years when her bestie becomes her stepmom. Rhaenyra must fight for women's rights over the women's wrongs of Alicent Hightower. She's sad. He is your son, Viserys. Your blood. His last words to me and I was the only one to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> then they're supporting players like Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, and the King of the Passive Aggressive Remark. Perhaps there's some better use for the princess's talents, Your Grace. Kristen Cole, a hardened uh, combat pause. veteran. I mean, come on, look at that face. Which one? Uh, Kristen. <laughs> Kristen. <laughs> come on. Well, Kristen Cole, I am. Um, he's going to, without resorting to spoilers, uh, if you don't like him now, just wait. Um, <laughs> although they did, it, he did have like quite the arc because when they introduce him as a uh, as like a foil to Damon and like he beats his ass in the tournament, you're like, all right, all right, cool. Yes. Ooh, and yes. he's Dornish, nice. Um, but then they, uh, man, he really has a, really can't get over that one, that one hot night he had right here. <laughs> Move on, dude. Don't have to start yeah, you got You got to keep going. Like, come on. Yeah. She's like a princess. Like, you got to. Yeah. She was not going to run off with you. Um, it's just not going to happen, bro. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, he. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll see, you'll see some good stuff with him coming. And then Otto Hightower, I like. like I liked him. I, I, there was a lot of um, Otto Hightower. Like, where does he stand in like the all-time Game of Thrones schemer schemer rankings? Um, oh, he's like he's one of those instigators where it's like you really have to. Someone would have to come up to you and be like, you know what he's doing, right? Because he's so <laughs> slick. He's like, I think one of the slickest. I think he's slicker. Teams. Yeah, he, he's slicker than you than you give him credit for because he's not. So obviously scheming, even, yep. even though he is, he's scheming. Oh, ooh, we got a, we, I think there's a lot. We have a rogue lawn. A rogue lawn. Um, just a, in, a, in a nice third act twist. Just <gasps> me least expect it. He's logging in, but we'll keep talking about Otto for now. Yeah. Um, he, he's a, oh, oh, do we have a ah. third? Hey, we, we have a rogue lawn. <laughs> hey, everybody. Sorry hey, about Will. that. <laughs> What's up, man? Hey. Well, um, we were just talking about Otto Hightower and where he ranks in the in the uh, schemers, uh, yeah. the all time scheme rank. My theory, like I think that he's very like because he's not like uh, uh, you know obviously not the same series, but he's not like Worm Tongue where it's very obvious. He's like I am the evilest person in the world, and he's not like Littlefinger where it's kind of very obvious like I am the evilest person in the world. He's more of a like look as your friend, as your best friend. Yeah. I just have to tell you. And as your father, is, it'd be yes. really nice to go comfort the king right now. He could use somebody to. Exactly. To right Gross. Sorry, there's a cat uh, hugging me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my cat really likes Otto Hightower. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, think they, I think, I yeah, think it's, one of those, it's, it's one of those things where it, it, I think Littlefinger sort of spells this out at one point in, in Game of Thrones that it, it's not necessarily like it's a plan and I have this plan that it's like step by step and here's everything that's going to happen over the next several years, like mm. a prophecy. It's like, just keep lining up your pieces in the right or, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like open enough that you can still strategize in an individual way, but, yeah. but flexible enough that you're still setting things up for multiple scenarios, eventually working out for you. And it's like, I think it's, it's that, it's that kind of thinking that, that yes that I, is I think the what, most effective yeah just putting What's the people that he trusts in places where he can like figure right. out anything as long as he has his people in place and it's sort yeah. of like, opposing that what's with, happening like, with one of them right and sort of opposing <laughs> that with like a guy like corliss valerian who's sort of like right out in front like no it's me it should be me put me in you know like yeah mm -hmm. what what i think um i think subtly boosts him up the rankings for me is the longevity and um like he's somebody who like he's just he's got a great career, you know, he's spanning multiple dynasties and then, and then we've weaving his own into the Royal family, um, by getting his daughter up there. Um, Is he Steinbrenner? Yeah. He's like, I was going to go LeBron. Like he's like, <laughs> he's like consistently because like Littlefinger, like, I mean, what a rise, like started from the bottom. Now he's here. Like he really mm -hmm. climbed from nothing to, uh, to something. 
but um you know he's born Otto is like at the high towers or a noble like mm -hmm. prestigious family that he probably would have um but he, he he held on to that and held held his place against uh challengers for all that time uh which is which is something like to, that that long career arc not making too many waves just kind of waiting and biding your time until mm -hmm. it's right and then that's how you that's how you sit in the throne man you can't uh you can't be making these big huge swings like look uh, people are posting in the comments like tywin tywin lannister like you did too much man you got your kid mm -hmm. on the throne but like at what cost it lasted like a few uh, maybe a couple of years and then he, he choked at his wedding like you, you gotta you gotta mellow it out so you can the people when he's don't overthrow you you literally yourself. just described joe biden <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to be a centrist uh, uh, people <laughs> pleaser, and then um, you know no one will overthrow you. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting too that that how much dragons sort of add to and complicate the mix because like it's 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 like a third. It used to be you know that you got armies and like there that that's important, and then funding. You know, like then those yes. were the two things. It's like maybe ships. You know, like well they've got the ships, but they've got all the money. But we've got the largest army and like now it's just like well that there's a whole other piece on the board in this era and it's like yeah but like they've nukes. got yeah yeah, yeah right yeah. they've got like five dragons so that uh, there there goes that whole advantage yeah yeah uh well interesting will be interesting to watch uh again no spoilers but you know we you can look up how this all ends if you want uh let's keep going but don't right. go, yeah still the most fragile <laughs> white knight in the land spoiled oh he pretty the Valerians, an ancient family who bring much needed diversity to people in ridiculous white wigs. And lurking, ever lurking, is Laris Strong, who's like Littlefinger if he were more into little piggies instead. Wee, 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 wee. So, uh, for free? Yeah, for free. Don't show Pete for free. Well, there was an exchange going on. Yeah, she uh, was oh, yeah. paying him off, yeah. This was a, I think um, Laris was a fantastic addition to the show because things were a little <laughs> quid pro to. I hate right? you so, so much, Ryan, um, that's so good. <laughs> things are pretty straightforward uh, at the beginning of this show, like the first four episodes, like it was pretty contained to just these main Targaryen and high towers. And like, there weren't enough wild cards. There weren't enough like weird little people in the background. <laughs> um, and then bam, they hit us with Laris and I am all the way back in. Uh, I thought he was just—he's the spice that makes uh, that makes the Game of Thrones stew work. I think, um, yeah. Uh, and where and if you put him in the ranking of like Laris, Littlefinger, Otto Hightower, where do you have, where do you rank those three? Oh, he's below all of them. Like his uh, picadillos are going to be what gets him <laughs> like caught up. In my theory, um, is that like his. With the other two, I feel like they are very single-minded, but with him, it's just like, bruh, you got too many depravities. Like, mm. there's no way. Like, too that's what's going to, yeah. Yeah, that's what's going to get you caught up. Well, yeah. it's a, it's an interesting thing too. I mean, I think there there's always where there's one. You know, we're we're always kind of assuming everybody's chasing the same thing, like the True. the the throne, or or at least yeah. like the throne for their house and. With him, he just wants feet. Yeah. yeah, all right. I think like he's an interesting character because even Littlefinger was after the the same like the pursuit of power, the pursuit of well, wealth, and or, um, and uh, what's her name? Yeah, yeah. Right. he wanted. Uh, yeah, he wanted. Uh, Stoneheart. Uh, right, but yes. he wanted to like. He still wanted to like rise up the ladder, and I feel like Laris. It doesn't feel to me like he's tremendously into like. I gotta have a better showing at court, or I have to have a fancier title, or I need to do more. He doesn't care about his house at all. I think it's really more like, uh, what can I get out? Of? You know, like how yeah. he's just kind of playing the angles because he's a weird creep and like, oh, what, what can I, how can I service being a weird creep the most? And like, I feel like that's kind of a new element, you know, like somebody who's not in it for any kind of long-term status gain, but is just like playing it to see what they can get for themselves. Yeah. And he's also a weird hot creep, which is like, you could just- Hot creep, wow. Huh. I wouldn't have thought. I don't think they're going. Huh. For that. I'm sorry. I think no, they're not going for that. No, they're not going for that. But it's true. I think, think he could. I think he could get feet for free without having to kill people. Um, wow. I think he could just get. Feet All free. right. Hey, you heard it here first, uh, folks. No, I mean, I've, I've been, been on Twitter. <laughs> I've been on TikTok. I see what you all sacrifice yourself for. Women, stand up. Stand I, up. 
<laughs> they go, they're 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 definitely also playing with that same. It's like it's it was a it was a benighted time for people with obvious physical problems or or disabilities, and I think they, they it was the same thing they were playing with. You know, with, with like uh with like Kyrian. Dinklage's character. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, like th- that that idea that it would it was as bad as it is today, and as much stigma as you will yeah. face in today's dumb society. That dumb society was like far worse and it really would put you in this place where yeah. you would feel like a true outcast he's still hot he's just a creep it's the, oh, wow. the foot, that is what i'm saying the, the fact that he is, you know he's got that obvious sort of disability yeah. and i think there, there's talk of like he's not able to like do the normal things a lord in his situation would do and he's not seen as like a marriageable prospect and all yeah, these other yeah. things yeah. that sort true of have story. kept him from feeling even as a second or a third son of an aristocratic house that he would feel like he has a place. Yeah. Um, not to throw John uh, Bailey under the bus, but I did, uh, I, I got that line in a pickup of, you know, I said, uh, say we, 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 like the little piggies thing. I'm not sure he's ever heard the we, we, we all the way home. We, we, we all the way home. Because I think, I think he, yeah. he, went, he went deliverance instead of, uh, instead of uh... <laughs> It, it still works. That's funny. Works. Hey, that's a way yeah. to squeal like a pig. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Keep going. If you thought MTV's lineup was full of hard to watch pregnancies, strap in for a show that's more comfortable with dead moms and stillbirths than a red state legislature where the showrunner had to explicitly promise to tone it down this time. And though their female characters go through they hell, and they at least didn't they all have easy access to Plan T. It will rid you of any unwanted consequences. It's best to be certain. That's so based off pause. Westeros, hundreds of years. Pause. 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 Uh, that is, uh, 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 my guess is that's based on Raspberry Leaf too, which uh, back in the day uh, was both used as a way to, um, and who knows if it was real. This is like one of those, uh, don't trust TikTok, but I remember mm-hmm. this being a thing when I was a kid. Um, people would be like, oh, well, if you can't get uh, plan B, you can just like drink raspberry leaf tea and it will make you have a duh, 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 duh. or if you are like nine months pregnant and you're ready for that baby to come out, you drink raspberry mm. leaf tea and that makes that baby come out. So that is that is based in something. Yeah, there's a lot of um, homespun stuff about uh, let's call it homeopathic stuff about um, those things. And yes. that I wonder uh, there's a place in Los Angeles when my wife was pregnant that apparently has a special salad that will like induce labor. Wow. <laughs> All right. And I'm going back, home. Maybe. Oh, wait, I'm already home. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, apparently there's like castor oil in the dressing or like something wow. that like, uh, that like kickstarts things if you're, and, and apparently this place is full of um, very pregnant women trying to get the baby out eating oh the salad. Yeah. <laughs> labor salad? <laughs> Yeah, the yes, labor yeah, there's a lot of homeopathic stuff. But yes, so that is at least something where it's like, I don't know if I believe any of these things, but I do know that some people on the planet I live on do believe that this thing yeah. is a thing. There you go. Um, doesn't taste like raspberries, though, which is unfortunate. Um, hmm. Yeah. It's well, no, because it's raspberry leaf tea. Yeah. It's not yeah, the nasty. actual raspberry. All right, keep going. For winter came all over it. But don't worry, the Baratheons are still dumb. Where's the bloody Maester? The Starks are still loyal. There has never lived a Stark who forgot an oath. Lannister's <gasps> Smog, Targaryen's Cuckoo. The episode's directed by Miguel Sapochnik, impossible to see. And now, more than Dude. ever, the dragons and- <laughs> How did you not learn Dude, the last time? <laughs> I had to like turn, uh, uh, I couldn't even watch it on my regular TV because it was like, I can't turn the brightness up enough. <laughs> I could yeah. friggin' see it. I had to like cast it on um uh I had to cast it, I casted it on my big TV and that didn't work. I cast it on my laptop and that didn't work. I literally <laughs> had to put it on my phone, which is <laughs> wild because it was the only one I could turn the brightness up enough where I could actually see what was happening. Here's here's the problem is that they shoot this and edit it on the best equipment possible yes. like yeah. 800k uh yeah. cameras and and editing consoles and monitors and stuff like that you are seeing more detail when they make the show than when they stream it on mm-hmm. like over your like sub dsl web connection or whatever yes. it gets compressed and you and we all have uh, shittier tvs than they do so 
just have somebody on set with a phone, watching it also on a, t- on on the a phone, phone. Yes. and being like, I can't see it. Can't, sorry, can't see the dragon. Turn I don't up, know what that is. Lights. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's easier for us to turn the brightness down than it is for us to turn it bright enough to see is my guess. So come on, Miguel. Uh, you, we, 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 we've been over this in the, the Battle of Winterfell. Um, I mean, it, it really, it does also feel like now that we are decidedly in the streaming era, we know everybody yes. is watching all of this stuff on televisions or, or on laptops or computers or whatever. Uh, it, it like maybe just the new standard would be look it your your show is your content is going to be seen in like a medium light room. It's not going to be seen in a movie theater because all of these standards were set when the presumption was darkened theater. Yep, and that's mm-hmm. the best way to project something and see it show yes. up and be bright and have contrast and it, it doesn't pop like ever on a screen the way it does on a movie. So we should stop I'm watching using this that at the standard. DMV. Like there are fluorescent bulbs above. Right. It. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I think, yeah, like a living room with like a light on in the next room is like, that's how most people are going to watch it. So you should plan on that being the atmosphere. Yep. All right. Now, you know, uh, keep going. <laughs> Ever, the dragon's enormous ex machinas that keep surprising people despite being as big and loud as a 747. <laughs> There we go. That's the writing quality we got used to. Starting to feel like old times again. Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet. Starring <laughs> the Leprechaun, Matt Damon. You're an uncle lover. Yes, it's true. Nobody loves uncles quite like you. It's not easy being green. The queen who never gasped. The dread pirate mm-hmm. Corliss. King Louis of CK. You'll pay for this, Potter. <laughs> Hollywood's worst Chris. Prince Eric. That's what I do. I lurk and I tow things. The lion creeps tonight. Lucerus looking like a snack. Meeting balls. I wonder what those are for. Oh, a human spoiler alert. You are the beast beneath the moon. Immortan Joe's Jack. And calling someone a without really saying it. Sooner or later you may get one who looks like you. He doesn't know, does he? All strong. Does your brother mention if this one also bears a marked but entirely coincidental resemblance to the commander of the City Watch? He is Lenor's son. What grounds could there be What's for... indeed, Lord Beesbury? What? Indeed. indeed. Come on, you know <laughs> you want to say it. Our children are <laughs> Ooh, he said it. You were in so much trouble. I love that. That is a total like Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, yeah. I love the like. That's the problem, and not that they're uh, not black. <laughs> it's like they're not oh, black they're enough. <laughs> they're not black though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's it. That's all I had to say. That's right. Yeah, it was. It was an interesting decision for a show that was obsessed with like purity and like uh, lineage and stuff like that, that. That it did revolve around the kids not being black enough. But- I, I was saying, <laughs> I that, I think but I would think about hilarious. it this way. Imagine if the Valerians all look in, like they did in the books, exactly like the Targaryens. Imagine trying to keep all of those characters separate. I oh, think there was a brutal. very, I think there was a very compelling show-specific reason to make the Valerians black. It it does help visually. We immediately know which are the Valerian kids or which are the Targaryen kids. So in addition to it being a wonderful thing to open up and diversify the cast just on principle, I Very actually helpful. feel like there was a good storytelling and aesthetic reason to do it in this one. And then There's even more helpful no to way. call that side of the Civil War, the Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Okay, got it. That, uh, I mean, they, yeah. cut that, they got that one from Curb Your Enthusiasm. That was a Larry Day. Right, we on Black Family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Black Family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bravo for regally blonde blonde that was um that's a that's an all-timer thank um, you thank you yeah, yeah. Uh, all right let's let's finish it up toward yeah. the end of the world of men it is to begin with a terrible winter and if the world of men is to survive a targaryen must be seated on the iron throne and uh, actually all you really need is a stark with two working hands <laughs> yeah could have, bran could have already been king for that that would have been fine uh uh, uh 
<laughs> Anyways, Aegon's <laughs> dream said there had to be a man on the throne who had a, a very good story. It was, a, it was a, <laughs> you, we, we got to give you a very good story. I've never. Who has? <laughs> I don't want someone on the throne with a very good story. I want someone who is good at laws and stuff. That was, they should have just called George and been like, George, we're a little stuck. Why is Brand? Why do they make Brand the king? It's a weird Yeah, you call. can, it almost feels like they didn't want spoilers. It's like, no, you kind of, yeah, you or it feels like some it, George what? had his little outline and on it was like, Brand becomes king. And they were like, oh, fascinating. I wonder why Brand becomes king. But did and he? It was like, because I know that they, four days later, like, they shot the, um, they shot multiple endings. Uh, yeah. or had multiple scripts at least for right. who they appoint as king at the end. And I wonder, A, like, even if George R. R. Martin thought that Bran would be king when they talked about the outline, you know, uh, seven years ago, I'm sure, I'm sure he's pivoted by now. I'm sure George Martin is like, Pivot. oh, that didn't go well. Like, oh, okay, well, that was, that was a weird call. But all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll well, re-pick. you know, we'll find out when the new book comes out when, when we're 80. St- yeah, Song He'll of Summer. He'll still be alive somehow, yeah. even though he's older than all of us and still oh, going man. to Comic-Con and we will be on our death yeah. No, Daniel, and... didn't you hear? He's 75 to 76 and a half percent <laughs> done. Uh, yeah. It's like an anime villain where it's like, he's only using 80% of yeah. the power. <laughs> <laughs> he's charging up. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh man all right uh we still got um outtakes and questions to get to but i'll pause right now to say thank you for watching please like and subscribe and hit the little notification bell if you haven't yet uh we have a fun episode of by the numbers uh, that came up this week as well comparing all the nudity and violence and lies and incest and all the things you pay to watch uh for free um uh in a uh, convenient form right to your this side of your screen, you can click the the by the numbers video. Check that out after this one uh, between Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. We also have um, an Andor stream tomorrow. Um, uh, Ryan is pleading with me in the script to react to the news. <laughs> I refuse. We, we, also, we need to do an SJU, like a, just a whole separate a news reaction yeah, one. We but some people were up. asking for some Witcher thoughts since it's tangentially in the world or, you know, in the sphere of big budget fantasy streaming shows. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, well, we'll 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 do that at the during the Q and A time. Um, we'll we'll stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, yeah, what I, you know what I want to do because I'm just going to be doing it anyways. Is this Friday? I want to watch the Weird Al movie. So if anybody wants to watch the Weird Al movie, I'm I do I that watch live. The Weird Al movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, really I have want, to do. How do we get the what, How do we get the Roku channel? That's yeah. yeah, you gotta stream the Roku chat. Yeah, how, can like, I have a Roku? So you, oh, no, and you, you don't get, even have to have a Roku. You don't have to have a Roku. Like, you can watch that on the web. You can just like okay. log in. I think it's yeah. free. It Maybe we free. can get fandom to buy Roku if we uh, ask ooh, them enough. There there you and then we could just have I it. I mean, big yeah. daddy fandom, get us a Roku. Um, <laughs> but if you guys want to watch along, I'm I, I think we should just do that together because. I want to do that anyways this Friday. So um, we'll we'll put that together and we can all yeah. watch. Um, I have a, a wrestling story. podcast that I have to do at like nine, but I'll be done by 1030 and then let's watch Weird Al. Let's just watch Weird Al uh, at some yeah. point on Friday. So stay tuned for that. Um, all right. Uh, outtakes. We got some outtakes. Let's roll. When Thrones ended three years ago, they declared he with the best story would be king. You know, Why? Bran. Who has a better story than Bran the Broken? Everyone yeah. else! HBO is banking <laughs> on your love for the early seasons. And firing the smooth brains who tried to bring you Confederate while taking orders from the mind who came up with a red wedding. Never bet against Double R. Martin. He'll do anything to not finish Winds of Winter. Anything. Starring King of Pain, Dr. Ew, Niece and Desist. Target, mm. the princess who got promised, the bossed daughter, the mm. girl in the high tower, mm. <laughs> Rannis, Drift King. <laughs> Wait, why wasn't that in snake there? Snake <laughs> naked and afraid. You are not the father. Footstalker, Quentin on the D-Lo, Family Feudal, the heir up there, the queen's <laughs> gambits. There are, in fact, various queens who making gambits, enact yeah. various gambits. Right? An <laughs> there accurate, indeed are. An accurate title. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the Q&A. Uh, Jim One asks, thoughts on the time jumps? The only issue I had where they reduced the impact of Harwin Strong and Lena's deaths. It mm-hmm. felt like we did not get a lot of time with them. Uh, thoughts on the time jumps, anyone? 
Um, I, 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 it was one of those things where I felt like, do you not know if you're going to get a second season? Because I feel like if this was years ago, back when the streaming walls were like full on in their war, it would have been that they wouldn't, we would not have had a bunch of time jumps. They would have filled that time out so that they could make sure that they would get this to whatever. And then the, um, combination of kind of the eventual bubble bursting of streaming stuff along with the ending of uh, the original Game of Thrones being kind of like unenthusiastically uh, uh, received, made it where they were like, let's just jump in time and just get to where we're going. Like, let's just get to the fireworks factory. No, I, I don't think that's true. I think it's the textbook that the, this one's not written like a novel. It's written like a history of the whole dynasty. I don't really know how you do this show in a conventional narrative way. Because you, you want to start, you could have done it without the recasting. I feel like the time jumps, there was no real way to avoid it. You could have just cast actresses and asked them to play a few years younger in the beginning and then a few years older. Well, we were talking half. about that before you got here. And I I have to say, like, the, the recasting is very well done. Yeah, like, no, those I, I were two of the only characters where I was like, oh, I still know who you are. I, I think yeah. it was well done. You got I that agree. I'm just saying you could have you could have softened that blow. They mm. they did that on purpose to kind of create independent feeling sections. Mm. So we get the like, you know, oh, this was the long term impact of this early stuff that happened. But I feel like uh, I don't know how you do it without like, well, we got to leap a few years here because mm. otherwise. You, you want to open with Viserys at the height of his powers, making these fateful decisions. Before he gets the, de the, the decline, yeah. Right, because then that that would lose impact if you just jump, if we started and he was already this like falling oh, apart. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying right. it's what they would have done. In fact, I, Martin <laughs> just this week was things. saying he wanted to go back even further and actually start, like this show, we get a little prologue when it's them picking Viserys over Rhaenys to be the, the next king. Mm. Yeah. Martin was saying he actually wanted to start the show there. There would be a few episodes then, and then you jump to Viserys, and then you jump to give that Rhaenys Viserys relationship more. So it's like, you're going to kind of lose a little something wherever you go. I think people yeah. were right that yeah. you do lose some of the impact of stuff like Harwin Strong and Sir Leonor, because mm. we haven't gotten to know them as well. But you were just we're, we're sacrificing them for other characters, you know, like there it's always a trade off at, at some point. I think. Yep. Um, here, here. Well, uh, still good. I, I would be fine if they started with Aegon the Conqueror or whatever, uh, which which leads into our next question from Nachikit Nake. How many people are named Aegon in this show? Who knows? Only uh, two in this show. One, one live one. I, I guess one. But there's. I can think I can think of offhand like there's got to be at least five Aegons because well Aegon um, the fifth is the one who is, he's the is, father of the Mad King right he's a, no a, well maybe he is he's Egg from Duncan Duncan right. Egg he is Egg from Duncan Egg yes um, I believe he's so, also the father of the the Mad King like he's the king before yeah. the Mad King who's the one who gets deposed and by he's, Robert he's the fifth so there's at least five there and then Jon Snow's true name. Aegon Targaryen. Right. There's a lot of Aegons, is my point. <laughs> also, yeah. Duncan Egg. Egg is just, really good. You should watch there, it. Or there's just, it. Sorry. Yeah. In this show, there's just the guy who becomes Louis of CK in our in our video. He's Aegon the second and he becomes yeah. king. And the other Aegon was the conqueror back in history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh Linger Sangor asks a uh, question. It brings a power in House of the Dragon had a <laughs> versus who would win. A versus. <laughs> Yeah, uh, on acting, effects, story, wigs, etc. Or ask Danielle anything about wigs. So, Danielle? <laughs> I mean, if it's wig again, wig versus wig, which also uh, versus was great until they yeah. messed it up with money. I'm very sad. <laughs> I love versus. Um, I mean, if we're just going based on wigs, then I, I got to go with them rings. I got to go with them rings. Um, okay. I'm sorry, Hot D sucks on wigs. It just does. Um, and that's okay. That's fine. But, you know, if it's like a versus versus acting effects, story wigs, et cetera, it's hard to say because I want to say that like the, um, the locations of Demerangs were so gorgeous. Everything looked great. Most of it was practical. It looked amazing. Um, 
but that's also a story about like moving around, being in different places. Whereas this is a uh, 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 Hutty, like Game of Thrones has always been a story about like things, shady things happening in shadier, smaller rooms. A lot of, uh, yeah, um, a lot of um, Red Keep and a lot of uh, really drafty looking throne rooms for a lot of different kings. Yes, like, yes, every yes, place yes, looked yes. miserable to just sit in and be like, well, I guess I'm the king here. But it serves the story. So you can't yeah. be like, oh, it's terrible because it's like, no, that's the story that they're telling. No, there are I child like fighting that, pits here. I do yeah. like that uh, Laris Strong is the first one who seems like he's not really that into the sigil thing. Like, the strong yeah. house has their own sigil, but he's like, oh, I'm going to be this lightning bug guy. Like, uh, I'm going to go and I'm going a different way with it. <laughs> to and, be fair, uh, have you seen a lightning bug? They're pretty cool. We've really never mm. seen, like, we've never seen that. He, like every, even because like Damon Targaryen, he's kind of the black sheep of the family, but he's still in the dragons as a fee, as a personal theme. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this one's an interesting one to end on. Uh, Green Star says, what do you think of the different dragon designs? I enjoyed how I could tell those ones apart. And I could, which I thought was very yes. impressive. It, yeah. Usually um, dragons all look alike. Is that okay to say? They all look Wait. alike to me. Oh, oh I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've been canceled by a big dragon. Um, yeah. But I thought that they did a great job uh, giving Drag them all personalities. Matter. I do, like, I remember... Arax and um, Valeria, was it Valeria? See, that's the thing is like, I draw the line at remembering their names. I'm not Absolutely. gonna remember your pet's name I, if I'm struggling <laughs> to remember your name. So yeah. I went people first and I kind of hit my cap, uh, but I do v think that, Vagar, yeah. Vagar, Vagar is the really big one that eats the smaller yeah. dragon and the boy who's riding it in this one. Yeah. Like that, that's the, the most important dragon from season one to remember, I believe. Yep. So that was pretty cool. I thought they did a really good job. Yeah, um, I, I like different. how they're they're very much drawing this distinction because it would have been a very important distinction to the Targaryens. That you could always tell the huge ancient dragons that have been around for forever. They're like yeah. a different category than the younger, newer, smaller models. And like that's thematic because like they keep the dragons keep getting sort of smaller and weaker until they eventually like disappear entirely. And then when by the time Daenerys comes around, she's got the only surviving ones or the mm -hmm. only living yeah. ones. Yep. Um, cool stuff, man. I, I'm sad that we have to wait two years to come back. Uh, but um, well, yeah, you know, that's, they, that's they, just if the it, it makes is. for a better story, I would yeah, rather have that. Time. Please do not rush me. Yeah. Yep. Um, so good for you, uh, Zaslav. You gotta you gotta hit on your hands. Um, you really you really put in the the work to to make. HBO uh, to to keep it in the in the black, as they yeah. say. Um, wow, Casey so, Boyce. Yeah. We gotta you gotta single out Casey Boyce. He's the guy that runs HBO content. This is his baby, uh, and he was uh, like it. It he he ends up looking like savant. Like he's got Feige level, uh, you know, optics on this because he was the one who was looking at like ten Game of Thrones spinoff projects and going. That, that one. That one. Yeah. And like and they refilmed winner, it, didn't they? Didn't they have to refilm the pilot or something like that? There was a whole there was a show Blood Moon, they were calling it. Yep. Which there, was is, the there is Watch a pilot that they just buried. That Jane yeah. Goldman made that they spent a lot of money on. They were all good to go. And that one's set during like Age of Heroes, Long Night, like ancient history. Uh, and so yeah, he made the call, like, nope, not good enough. We're not gonna do that one. Let's try this one instead about the Targaryens. And, like, and the same thing happened with the Game of Thrones pilot where they recast yeah. and they they completely redid yeah. it uh, I think a couple times. So, so yeah, yeah hey, that, get, that guy's get it right. voice with kind of the magic touch, you know, yeah. like that's that's a that's impressive to, to yeah. pick a winner out of that crop. Yeah. Nicely done. Um, well, we'll be back next week with a holiday sequel. Um, mm. it's, it's about mm. that time. Um, I think it's going to be an enjoyable nostalgia trip, uh, yeah. to a place that, um, we've all been before, even on honest trailers. So that's your clue. Um, we'll and a notable, a notable cameo, a some a very film, notable a film cameos. with a famous iconic cam. It's not afraid to get political. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, so <laughs> we'll see you next week, uh, here on honest trailer commentaries. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.